I'm not happy at all. I was just crying in the car. But I'll explain more later. Alright guys, so I'm a little bit more settled. The lighting is obviously my thing here. But um how did I get here? You're probably like, huh? Huh? Well tomorrow I'll be officially 40 weeks. Um I um yeah, tomorrow I'll be 40 weeks officially. Um, well, in a couple of hours, because it's like 7 o'clock now. I had an appointment today, you know, my weekly regular appointment at 1 p.m., 1.30 p.m. today. And this would have, this week, um, my doctor checked my cervix for the third time, and she had also ordered an ultrasound because when she checked my cervix twice prior, I wasn't dilated, my cervix was completely closed. But I explained to her that, you know, I'm not really worried about that because with Rosella, everything happened quickly. I dilated and gave birth all in less than 16 hours. When I got to the hospital, it was at 5 a.m. and I gave birth at 10 a.m. So five hours, yeah. Everything happened super quickly. But, um, I come today, she said that she wanted to do the ultrasound just to check on the fluid in my stomach. And then obviously after we did the regular appointment and um, she was checking my cervix to see if I was dilated. And I was dilated, but my fluid was low. Um, they seen that my fluid was low on the ultrasound, so she already said that I had to be induced. I was like, I can't wait two days because I had Rosella. Um, I had also let my tummy for 10 months and one day. So 40 weeks in one day. Um, and she said no, because my fluid is low. So here I am at the hospital. I had to basically, she wanted me to go right away because the hospital is like next door to where I go to my appointments, which is very convenient. But um, I was like, nah, can't do that, can't do that. So Rosella was with me, Bradley was with me at the appointment. I said, I need to go home. I need to grab my stuff. I need to get her set up to get to my mom's house. I need to set up my dogs. I have, there's so much for me to do. I cannot just just go to the hospital, especially when like I'm not dying or anything, you know? So she's like, fine, max, like one hour, two hours. It took like two and a half hours, three hours. I got here, the nurses was like, oh yeah, the doctors always want you to come rushing come rushing mind you she's not even the doctor on duty for deliveries tonight or today so whatever but um i was i was super i was super upset and she knew that she knew i was super upset because she knew i didn't want to get induced um i'm very scared of this whole induction thing 
I'm scared of Pitocin contraction pain versus natural contraction pain because it's much, it's, it's a different level of pain. It hurts more. So, when Bradley was driving us here, I got here around 5.30. As he was driving us here, I literally like just, I had to process everything that was going on when she said I'm getting induced today. Um, but as we were driving here, I just, as we got closer and closer, and we were like three minutes away, I just broke down in the car because I was just like, this is not how I wanted it to go. And I'm terrified of the Pitocin. I'm terrified, I'm, ter I'm terrified of the pain of the contractions with Pitocin. Like I'm just, I'm scared as hell. Everything else I'm not too much scared about. I, hopefully I don't rip again. I didn't rip with Rosella. It's just, it's, I, I did not want to get induced. This is not what I planned for. Obviously things don't go as planned. You never know what's gonna happen. But induction, and I'm just like, damn, like what if last week I scheduled my appointment instead of today, like two days later? What if I gave birth naturally two days later instead of um, having them induce me today? You know what I'm saying? But I just, my mind has been blown. As of right now, you know, I'm chilling. Um, I'm not on any medication or anything yet. They just hooked me up on the IV, took my blood. Um, and now I'm fine. Apparently, I'm contracting every five to six minutes, and I had no clue. Absolutely no clue. And I'm three centimeters now. When the doctor checked me earlier, I was two, and now I'm three. Um, and I'm contracting every five to six minutes. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, you're just not feeling them for some reason. I'm just like, oh, that would probably explain why I had my daughter so quick, because I did not know... When I got to the hospital, I was four centimeters with her. So, mm, right now, um, they said that the plan that the doctor came up with is to start my Pitocin at 3 a.m. So, they might be, it's the third right now, October 3rd. So she said I could eat and drink whatever I want because I'm starving. I haven't eaten since uh, 11.30 this morning, 12 o'clock. So I'm starving. I'm starving. So she said I could eat and drink whatever I want until 3 a.m. And then after that, 3 a.m. is when they would start my Pitocin. Um, and they have to keep a very close eye on me because since my body naturally um, did everything quickly with the Rosella, they have to monitor and be careful with what they give me because then I'll just like be ready for delivery or whatever. So I'm focused on food right now and I'm okay right now. I'll get back to you guys, I guess, if there's a new update or when they start the Pitocin, which is in a couple of hours. Right now my belly is just on food. So yeah. Just come now, I'm trying to back and go, you can hear it. Alright people, it is currently 12.38 in the morning. I am hooked up to IVs. Um, I got a dripper going on right now. Um, 38, so call it 40. Not, yeah, call it 40. 140, 240, so in two hours and 20 minutes. And about that time, um, they will be starting my Pitocin to induce me. I may sound happy and all, but I'm not. My hand actually really hurts. I don't like this. This is the only thing that's bothering me. There's still shock that I'm not feeling it in my contractions. And I'm talking and like, you know, like perfectly happy through all of them. The nurse still can't believe it. She was in here for a good 30 minutes just chatting it up with us. And she's like, you're still not, you're just talking through everything and you're not feeling anything. I'm like, yeah, I told you, I don't feel nothing. I don't know. So I'm just scared if I'm, I'm going to start feeling shit through toasting, which I know I probably am. But um, the only thing that's been bothering me is this. It's very uncomfortable. But these are my drinks. Yes. When I get my Pertosin, I will update you. 
so the light is off in the room so the camera's gonna look disgusting it's gonna look fuzzy but um just a quick update it's five it's 507 they just started my pitocin i didn't do it at three i got about two hours of sleep um, the camera quality looks terrible, so that's that's pretty much just the update. Pitocin, five o'clock. And we have my foot is um raised on this so it's like high and then there's a ball right there excuse the bonnet but this is how i'm rocking right now um hi what's up um it's a new day it's a different day from when i left off at and i'm in better spirits um, than a couple clips ago. Baby boy. It's boy. He's here. He's healthy. I'm healthy. A lot of stuff was going on to get him out of me. Um, long story short, they call it sunny side up. Baby boy was facing some of the sunny side up. And I spent hours trying to just get him to move his face a little bit. He was down and everything, but I was, they had me in different positions and everything. Trying to get him just to turn his face a little bit so that when he came out, um, my, the front of my pelvic bone wasn't blocking him and like he wouldn't get stuck or it would be painful for me and him. Um, I got to 10 centimeters, I was induced. Um, and he did not move his face at all they spent hours trying to get it and they were just like all right we're just gonna attempt to push and if we can't then we gotta go c-section and lord i do not want to do c-section but by the grace of god i pushed him out when i got when his head finally came out and the pelvic bone problem was passed then they realized his umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck twice. So she quickly unraveled that. Thankfully, it wasn't tight. And the boy just came out. And I didn't rip or tear this time again. So no stitches. I was very happy. That was like literally the first thing I inquired about. I'm like, did I rip? Did I rip? Do I need stitches? I didn't. So I'm very happy. Um, that both me and him are healthy. He is here. I've just been catering to him and trying to get a little bit of sleep when I can. Right now he's asleep. I'm here alone. Bradley's gone. Um, he's not gone, gone. He just went home to like take care of his dogs and stuff like that. Um, he'll be back. <sighs> um, yeah. And it looks like somebody's waking up, so my time is limited. But I just want to come look here just to update y'all because uh, during the birth and everything and everybody trying to contact me and you know family members I just I was so exhausted even this morning I I didn't bother picking back up my phone I hooked it up with a charger and I've been having my phone on a timer for every two to three hours for feeding for him so yeah, well, I had this little free time. I was like, why don't I finish this up for you guys? So I'm going to get myself together while he's asleep. And, um, yeah, I guess we got a new family member, y'all. Welcome, baby Naleem.